Happy Saturday, everyone. Welcome to Strolling with the Orchids on Saturday, the 29th of July, 2003. We have a few things we're going to look at, some that we haven't seen in a while, and one that is very interesting. So let's start with that interesting one first. So if you saw the repot of the Miltonia spectabilis, I did not lose the spikes. As a matter of fact, this one here has opened up this gorgeous little bloom here and is working on another bud. And then noticed this morning, I have another bud opening here. And then the one on the side over here looks like she's getting ready to open up her bud as well. Starting to crack there. And then of course the new growth is, well, where is the new growth? There it is. The new growth is still working on its spike and growth. Neo, I hear that these are supposed to be fragrant. She's been open about two to three days. I don't detect any scent from her. I've heard and read that the Spectabilis smells like licorice. Not a big fan, so not real worried about that. However, I have also read that Spectabilis is more on the white pale side, but that some of them that have more Moraliana in them might have this purple. So I have been trying to identify her. So let me get a close up. So if anyone can give me an idea of which Spectabilis this is, that would be very much appreciated. Go ahead and leave that in the comments. And then what else is going on over here? My two Zygonesia Marasakis are coming right along. And I don't think that either one of them is going to push out a bloom just from the stress of the repot. Um, that Shaliriana leaf is just really, really growing, really growing. And I did move the small Shaliriana into the extra bedroom. Uh, here, my Lycasti is really working on opening up her leaves and getting some leaf on her, some foliage. And nope, she does not need to be watered. So kind of what I do to see if she needs to be watered is I will look at the pot, but I'll also look at these pseudo bulbs because these pseudo bulbs, especially this back one right here, will start shriveling if she needs water right away. I'm not gonna talk about the pathiopedilums too much today because Lin Lin did ask for me to kind of talk about how I care for them, you know, my regime, that kind of thing. So we'll talk about them in a different video. My Sinochi's Wine Delight, though, I don't know. She looks a little sad this year. Last year, she was nice and robust. I don't know if I'm just not giving her enough water or what, but this, this late growth, as I call it, didn't realize I was going to have a second direction of growth. is coming along pretty good. My Vanda Pocherette uh, is working on that leaf. She's got beautiful roots that you can see now in the pot. Let's see if I can zoom in and show you. There's one right there. Do you see it? How cute is that? And she's got about two more you can see. So I'm excited about her getting her roots in. And then the Epilalia, Catlea, Epilalia, no, Epicatlea. Yeah, Epicatlea, Renee Marquise Taylor. This new growth right here is doing nicely. And something I've been keeping an eye on is she has a little sheath, so she might be getting ready to bloom. Maybe not on that sheath. That might be a practice, and maybe not that growth, but perhaps the next growth that she puts out, and I think she had, no, I thought maybe she had another, another growth, but she does not. And below me, so I can move them out of the way, are ones we don't see quite a lot because this one stays in the kitchen, this is the Dendronium hexonia, hecunse, hecunse, I don't know. I had her under the Barina lights, but I felt like she was getting too much light because her leaves started to get this little yellowing on the tips. So I put her back where I've been growing her since mounting her, and that's in the kitchen right over the sink. And she has lots and lots of new growths coming. Loving it just loving it so the reason that her leaves are all wet is once a week what i do is i soak them in a bowl like i have this poor packs here and i just set it so that the moss picks it up and then 
absorbs it up. So this is wet all the way to the top, so I can take her out now. And then I will let them drain. Let me pour that back in. And then I just kind of let it drain. And then I will set her, but I'm going to set her up against something so that she doesn't fall over because this cork is kind of heavy. There we go. But she's still still living. I haven't noticed any new growths or anything on her. But this way, not only are the roots getting fed, but it's kind of a foliar feed as well. And so far, they they seem to be doing well. And then my little spray bottle I have for those that have aerial roots, such as my Hawaiian treat here. So while she's sitting, this part is sitting in. This part usually is hanging out, and I'll just hose down the aerial roots and give them a little drinky drink. And someone, I, I know Patricia asked, and someone else asked how many orchids I have now after I did the latest rehab ICPU unboxing from Orchid Supply Store that Ken sent. So did a count, and at the time I did the count, I had 212. Well, now I have 213 because the lovely Anita Brown, who, guys, she is the luckiest, luckiest lady ever. Take her to Vegas with you. She has won the Orchid Supply Vanda Draw for the month of July. So congratulations, Miss Anita. And if you'd like to be part of that, just go over to the Orchid Supply Store uh, YouTube channel. Uh, it's linked in the description below. And Ken has lately been doing drawings once a month where you can win. And if you just watch the videos, you'll learn how. And if you ever go to the OrchidSupplyStore.com and shop, use coupon code TRISH at checkout for 12% off. So this is the lovely fowl Cassandra. Now she came from Texas and it's hot in Texas. It's a little warm here in Colorado as well. So her blooms did not quite make it, but she does have a nice one that we can see on this side right here. Isn't she lovely? And I, I wish that you could see the sparkles on her. Maybe next time she blooms and it's a fresh bloom, we can really see the sparkling, but she is just beautiful, just gorgeous. So I have her currently in a heavy moss small bark mixture because she came in, you know those plugs that are made out of the like cocoa peat, the really fine stuff? And so when the direction said to give it three tablespoons of water once a week, I'm, at first I was like, well, that's not enough water. Good God. But then when I took her out because she had fallen out of the pot, well, I see why now because that's very, very water retentive. And she came in this pot right here without a plastic pot just directly in this pot right here. So I had to fix that because in my environment, there's no way I would have been able to take care of the lovely Cassandra, but isn't she gorgeous? So from what I understand, this is a cross of, I believe it is Equestris and Studeriana. So I'm excited to see her bloom again. I will be cutting off that spike here in the next day or so, just kind of let her little settle in. She's down here with these other fowls getting light from the east facing window. And look at the big fat juicy leaf on this no ID. Now this is a mini. So just note that when you get minis, they can become mediums, all right? And then this leaf here on the icing, which one is that? Icing Venus. Doesn't that look like a philodendron leaf almost? Like it's not as heart shaped as it was because it's starting to fatten out, but that's what that kind of reminds me of. And then I moved the Yellow King down here because I needed to make space up there for my Purpurata. I'll show you guys that in a second. <clears throat> but because she does have um, a Dontoglossum in her, I figured down here would actually be a little bit better because it's cooler, for one. You know, the further down you are, the cooler it is. And this growth right here is starting to produce her roots. I'm not going to jiggle it around because I just settled her back in. But out of the nine growths that she has, only eight of them are really doing anything. This one down here, I don't think it's going to develop. I don't think this one right here is going to develop. It hasn't, hasn't moved anywhere. 
but the rest of them are doing fine. Yes, the pseudo bulbs look rather swollen, not swollen, I'm sorry, dehydrated, but they are starting to swell back up. And that's when I went root, root hunting and I saw some roots on this one, whoop, on this one right here. She's doing fine. And then the latest big girl, one of the latest big girls, is also sitting down here. And this right here is actually her latest leaf. It was still kind of tender at the edge. So I just have her kind of sitting down here for now. She is senescing this bottom leaf, not too concerned, kind of expecting that. And then I pulled this one down right here. I think this one, yeah, this one back here is the one that's got the name. So this one is the Ming Sing Golden Lena right here. And just put that in there. So I pulled this one down because I'm getting ready to water some of these girls. And look at the leaf. Like she's just not skipping a beat. And the rocks are there for a twofold, decorative for me. And then to kind of help, she had this root right here. Uh, was kind of sticking up. So after I moistened it very well, I stuck it into the media and then these rocks are kind of holding that down. And then plus just for some, a little bit of support until she settles in. I also have this leaf right here, but her roots that she came with are still looking fantabulous back here. And I'm having to water her right now about about every 10 days, about every 10 days. I'm sure that once she really gets going, that's going to change. But she is in medium, small bark and perlite. With, I think a little bit of charcoal. There's no moss in that one. So I got my staple gun. I got my burlap. For those of you who've never seen Ken's mounts, where after he mounts, he puts a little bit of burlap just for some decoration. And I think that looks so cute. So I am going to do that with a lot of my mounts. So Ken, thanks for the idea. I think I already told you I was going to steal it. But what I'm going to do, especially for this Roy Taganagua here, is I want to make a pocket so I can add some more media. And this way, keep it a little more damp. I think I said it in a previous video that uh, I wanted to do something like that because these guys do like to stay a little more, more damp than most uh, dendrobium. And here's the purpurata. I have her sitting here. So there is bright light on the way right now. So that's my Barina light that hangs kind of just over this little corner here to brighten it up. And I have the Purpurata sitting about where she was sitting when she was under these Barina lights. So respecting her direction of light and her direction of growth. And she does, I believe, thought we saw, we, I saw, some root activity. I do see some root activity. I just don't know if I can show you without messing it up. But she does have some root activity. I don't want to finagle her too much. My variegated Oncidium back there, the pink perfusion, is doing well. I'm sure she would be a little more variegated if I had her under more light, but I want her to kind of get her groove on before I stress her with the light to get the variegation. And Miss Scary is extending her growth back there and starting to separate her leaves. So that's a good thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the Isabella right here, Lunar Eclipse. Look at the roots that she's put out. Loving that. Just loving that. Loving, loving, loving it. And what else is going on out of here? Oh, for those of you who did not see my post, Habiki decided to jump ship yesterday morning. I was turning on the lights here. Um, these are manual. These are not set on a timer. And I hit the stake because I didn't have a little clip to kind of show me in the face. Anyway, ended up dropping her. She ended up on the floor. I'll post the picture somewhere over here. But I decided to put her into a different pot so she's in a little little shallower pod. It's a little bit wider, but it's shallower. And I added quite a bit of moss to the mix she was in because originally she was just in some bark perlite and some tree fern. And I think that actually helped her because these leaves were rather flexible, loose, whatever you want to call them, flimsy. And they have really, really stiffened up over the last 24 hours. Now I did leave her laying there for a while. I put the plant in a bowl of water and I just walked away. 
just walked away. The Catatante Why Not is doing Fantabulous. And then my, oh, which one is that? The uh, Dendrobium Spectabulous is, where's that new growth? Where is it? There it is. So that one is still growing. I have to be really careful when I water not to get water on that growth. But the first growth is doing great. And then my Brasidium is finished making her bulb. She should be starting a new growth soon. Then this one back here. Uh, let's see if I can do this without knocking anything over. Bear with me real quick, guys. Let me move the twinkle out of the way. Let's move that one. Move that over. Look at this Miltasia. Look at this. Look at the growth on her. Now, I did strap it because it was growing kind of out towards the camera. So, decided to strap her until it kind of hardened off a little bit. But I need to pull this out to show you guys. So, yes, she is senescing quite a, quite a few leaves. However, she is a busy girl. Look at this. We've got some, looks like either a root or new growth. But we have a new growth on that one. And then the new growth I showed you guys last week. Look how much it's grown. So there are three pieces in here. And it looks like each one is doing something. And is that a little, that looks like a little nubbin. We might actually get a little cakey off of that. Hopefully that's not a bloom. But yeah, so she's, she's senescing um a lot but she's also producing so let me just set her to the side so i don't knock anything else over and then my twinkles here this spike here they are starting to swell whereas this one back here is just creeping out just creeping out and then I, i'm also going to do a separate video on the dendrobiums because i can't remember might have been lynn as well that asked about dendrobium. So I'll show you guys my dendrobium collection uh, in a separate video. The twinkle over here, she's still working on growths, but there are a couple that are getting ready to mature. So we might actually get some spikes off of her. And the Sherry baby over here actually is branching. And it looks like we're gonna have some flowers coming Let's see, I thought I saw another one. Yeah, right there. Oh, right there. So it looks like she's going to have some flowers coming as well. And then one right there. And But the spike is still, she's still working on the spike. So I don't know that she's going to be completely done. And then the Phalaenopsis still needs to be watered for today. Quick look at the ladies up here at the top. So the chains and diamond, the one over here in the corner, I did move her up here just because she's so big. She was kind of kept getting bumped. The Sandiriana again, not doing much. Gold Staff still working on her spike and that lovely new leaf, which I may end up, nope, it's too late. She's already starting to harden that off because I was going to do what I did with the Lark Song here because this leaf was hanging down to kind of get it to go out, kind of strap it up there. And then, uh-oh, okay. That one I'm gonna pull down and we're gonna take a look at her because a couple of days ago, I was looking up here and the orchid that used to sit right here had a bunch of yellow leaves and it was mealybugs. So let me pull that one down and we're going to take a closer look set you on the tripod so i can use both of my hands so let's take a look here so she is senescing one two and then three leaves not not abnormal for them to do three leaves but this because of what i saw a couple of days ago i want to take a look at her and treat accordingly so what i what i'm doing is i'm splitting the leaf in half so that I can just take it off on both sides. Okay, that looks like that one has a root that broke through here. Let's turn her around so I can, and then I'm gonna hold it by the crown. I don't know how much of this you can really see, but let's, there we go. And then let me hold her so I can get this other one off, this other piece over here. Let's 
Let's make smaller pieces. If it doesn't come off with just two, then just don't be afraid to make smaller pieces. You're already taking it off of the plant anyway. So let's do that. And then just very carefully, you just want to be uber careful that you're not damaging anything. Let's see. Take this little piece here off as well. Like I said, I just want to make sure I don't have anything going on in here. It looks like roots again. Take the rest of that piece off. All right, and then I'm following the direction of the growth. So the next one I'm going to take off is this one right here. And even though these are not completely senesced, um, a little paranoid, just a little paranoid. I'm sure everyone can relate to that. I'm sure we've all had something happen, and then once we see it on another orchid, we get a little freaked out. So if I don't see anything after taking this leaf off, I am going to leave that third one on. But again, it looks like it might just be natural. It's natural senescing. Nothing to worry about. Nothing to see here, people. Which is good. Which is good. I'm glad there was nothing to see here because this one is my Harlequin. And I would have been a little upset had she had a bug issue. All right, so I'm just going to give you a close-up just so you can see. She's got quite a few roots trying to come in there. And then again, on this side, you can see that root right there at the bottom right here. So I believe it was just the roots coming through and just natural senescing of her. And I'm going to get a rock and get her a little more stabilized since her support is now gone. So this last one right here, this third one, I'll just let it completely senesce on its own. I won't, I won't take that one off. I will, however, keep an eye on her just to make sure. And of course, now that I've done that, I won't water her until tomorrow to make sure that all of this dries out and any damage that I've done, any openings I've made, are completely sealed off. Well, let me get you back off the tripod. And then let's just take a quick peek at the Sagri wax sheath emerging. Last week we had to really look for her, and this week she's popped up pretty happy. This right here is grasshoppers. Ate on her last year when she was grown outside, and Maxima has, okay, let me move the twinkle, because otherwise I can just see me knocking it over. I've, uh, I've been real good at doing that the last few days. But we have, let's just zoom in. We have that new growth right there. And then she does have another new growth starting on this one. But more importantly, she has lots of roots going in the pot. And I'm hoping that by 2025, I get my first bloom because I've had her since 2021. Yes, since July of 2021, Yoshi ended up having her travel with the Shaliriana when I got the Shaliriana from him back then. Um, trying to see anything else that's going on. Still waiting on those roots on the Ruth. Not the Ruth. I always want to call her Ruth McNeil. It's a RTH Lois McNeil. Let me show you the tag. But I always want to call her Ruth for some reason. But I'm still waiting on her to develop some lovely roots off of this new growth because she is a monofoliate bifoliate. So I'm going to respect it as a bifoliate where she is very finicky about her roots and as you can see she's got a lot of them in there but when I cut this piece off and then finagle her this section here into the middle I'm sure a lot of those roots are going to abort and she's going to get a little angry hoping to get some roots off of pink doll because this growth is now complete and Back here, the Dewey Forest, again, I'm hoping by next year, 2024 perhaps, I'll get some blooms from her because I've had her since 2019, and she's been growing really well for the last year and a half. And over here, the White Cat Leia, 
has that new growth coming, coming really nice and strong, lots of new roots going in the pot. And then the green leopard, I did move over here, used to sit back there. I have the new growth where it is growing in the same light direction as before when we when she was sitting over there the growth was to the back because her light was coming from this angle here and then the encyclia I ended up putting here again to make space and her new growths are doing pretty good but I think I might have gotten some water into the new growths at some point because this brown spot it's dry it's not traveling anywhere and then as well as this growth right here she's got a, a few brown dry spots on her as well so I think when I was watering I might have gotten water into those growths because this middle growth is doing just fine it doesn't show any brown spotting on it at all but it does have roots coming along right here so that's amazing I'm assuming if there's roots outside the pot there's roots inside the pot and I think I've said this before this this girl's slow like she is so slow she has been working on that growth since last winter I mean she is slow as molasses in January going uphill in a blizzard my goodness and I have increased the watering to kind of kick start that but you know you can only do so much and then the yellow bird should probably be in bloom when we come visit her next Saturday because these, these buds are developing rather quickly. And then the Nidosa is still doing her thing. She's staying nice and open. Again, I'm remembering to water her. I think that's the key, guys. If you water your plants, I think they actually will do something. Um, let's see. Pulchras. Yep, that leaf. Look how much it's grown in that week. But let me know if you guys are ready for an update on the Phalaenopsis IPCU orchids. And we'll do an update on them because they're all pretty much doing something. They're, they're doing rather, rather well. I'm pretty proud of them. And down here, not much else is going on. Oh, my goodness. Look, I really need some suggestions, guys, on how to display my Gigantia um, in a permanent setup because I think I've told you guys before, this is kind of a, it was a temporary thing until I figured out what I wanted to do with her and she got established. But let's just, let's just do this. Look at this leaf. This leaf is already longer than that one there. And I want to display her where she's gonna kind of be like this and where I can hang her on the wall close to a light. I'm thinking maybe a black pot that I can set this one in so I can at least take her out to water her. And look at that beautiful root. Oh, just gorgeous. Got one there. So she is actively settling in. So I need some help and some ideas. So drop those down in the comments. Let me know. Because where I would like to display her is in that corner right there. I want to kind of hang her in that corner over there. So now that you kind of have an idea where I want her, what I'm looking for, let me have those ideas flowing. I want to show you before I leave the sweet memory blooms. Aren't the, oh, I just love these. And the scent on these, they do have a citrusy scent, but it's almost like lemon drops. Like it's a sweet citrusy scent. And I kind of enjoy it. It doesn't have that cleaner smell, that Mr. Clean smell. It has a beautiful, like, I don't know, like lemon drops. The candy, lemon drops candy. Oh, smells so good. And I put the strap back on because she was starting to lean over. I thought she was hardening off, but she's, she's still working on that. So I'm just going to leave that strap there. And as you can see, there's enough space here so it's not constricted it's just enough to kind of hold her up and there's enough space if she needs to expand over in here she can oh and Yoko my allergies are like starting to kick in so I'm gonna have to make a stop here so we're gonna stop on Yoko the more I'm looking at her the more I really think that this is a cakey simply because this leaf is now senescing and 
she's growing that new leaf there. However, even if it is a keiki and she senesces that leaf and it goes away, she's going to have to stay in this pot because as I told you guys, these roots are like Shaleriana roots, they don't bend. So this is the smallest pot that I can have her in and I'll just have to pay attention a little bit closer. And with that, you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. Enjoy your weekend and I'll see you on the next one.